This screencast will break down the difference between the course and period pages in JTLearn and the recommended items that belong on each. Your JTLearn site contains one teacher page, a course page for every course you teach, and a period page for every period you teach. For example, if you taught both physics and chemistry, you would receive one course page for each. And if you taught periods 1, 2, 4, 5, and 7, you would receive one period page for each. The course page is a great place to keep the majority of your documents for that given course. This way, you only have to put them on one page, and if you have more than one section of that course, all students have view viewing access. Recommended items to include on the course page are a course description, description of the online space, a calendar, and a class schedule grid. If you take a look at this teacher example of a course page, you'll see a course description and directions to using the online space, a calendar, and a class schedule grid. Period pages are often the pages that many use for just a few tasks. This is because if you have five periods, no matter what the course, you will always have five period pages. Each one of these pages needs to be updated individually. Unfortunately, there is no button to repeat what you do on one page to the other. Therefore, any information that can be universal across periods is best to put on your course page. Recommended items to include on period pages are a course and period title, a message to redirect students if you do not plan on using the space, the class schedule grid, the password reset web part, the classwork web part, and submission libraries. You can learn how to insert these three web parts by watching the given screencast. Keep in mind the password reset and classwork web parts can only be placed on the period pages. Finally, student submission libraries created using Feature Builder are often recommended to be placed at the period level. This way, when students submit an assignment, it will be housed on your individual period pages. By doing this, each submission library on the period page would only contain work from that given class. If you were to put the submission library at the course level, you may have 100 or more students submitting to one library, which is not recommended. Notice on this teacher's period page, there is a course and period title along with a link for students to be redirected if needed. There is a classwork web part, which once embedded pulls student grades from TAC. The students will only see their specific grades. Also on the period page is a class password reset web part and the class schedule grid. Also, as recommended, this teacher placed their student submission library on this page. To recap, on the period page, you'll want a course and period title, a redirect message if you're not using the page, the class schedule grid, password reset, classwork web part, and your submission library. As you begin to build out your course and period pages with the recommended items, Keep in mind that streamlining your navigation is extremely important for ease of use. Please refer to the navigation screencast to learn how to edit, delete, and add any items to your navigation. Keeping a clean, minimal navigation will help students navigate throughout your site. Less is more with navigation. The fewer places students have to click, the more likely they are to stay on task. Also, consistency with navigation plays a large factor with students being able to successfully navigate your site. Notice here the teacher has very few items in their navigation. Anything you do not plan on using, be sure to delete. A well-planned course and period page can truly change learning in the classroom.